Good evening. This is Sarah Chiu. Uh, the program's name is Basket Starfish, our language core. Uh, again, my language research has been going on for more than 20 years now. I have been traveling from country to countries, trying to live as basic as possible to understand, you know, what's in the ancient's mind, you know, when they speak. Book. So um, I present a very different view, you know, from the academic people now, uh, because I believe that uh, a lot of the writing are actually still kind of picked graph in form and then it is a sound that links us together not the grammar uh, we now pay a lot of attention to the grammar that's precisely what is separating us into different so-called family trees uh, I present you know a different view of looking at human languages because as long as we look at it as different family tree we will always have hierarchy and uh, uh, the basket stuff is just something very interesting because there is one common core every single one is just a branch coming out from the whole family so this is what I try to present um, I'm going to talk a little bit about the domestication uh, of animals and plants today um, you will never spring is here now you will never pay attention to that three little prawn of grass and uh, I will take you back to many thousand years ago so you will look at the grass through their uh, ancient pair of eyes and you will hear it, it with your ears. So uh, I will start now. And um, again, uh, the program, I mean, the language sound that I use is based on Cantonese, a very ancient southern dialect in China. It is not Mandarin, but I do use Mandarin uh, sometimes, you know, to show you the mutation or the variation of sounds within uh, the Chinese language system itself. Okay, so I will start from the very beginning now. Okay, uh, once again, I will show you this um, to show you what the basket starfish looks like. And as you can see, it is the core that we share. So no one should be higher than the other one. We all start at the same time from the same place. Okay, um, again, it is not a separated uh, family tree. Uh, everyone is just a, a branch because as long as we believe that as what the uh, normal academic view uh, tells you, um, it will actually usher in human hierarchy you know who's above the other so I want to tell you that no one should be above the other we are all in equal ground and it needs to be changed and uh, my research actually show you a lot of um, views from a female you know for, and from Asia as well uh, because we I think in the West uh, because of um, modernity we have lost a lot of how the ancient looked at the world around them okay so again I'm um, uh, Today I'm going to talk uh, more about the uh, domestication and um, how the ancient get to un got to understand uh, the living things. Uh, so living things, there are two types, of course, you know, animals and the plants. And uh, why I highlighted the A right there, because I had already talked a little bit about uh, the A symbol, also very ubiquitous in ancient Chinese writing as well. It is a symbol that we use to uh, represent life and also unseen motion and also the, the food itself which is definitely you know the the, the engine of motion so uh, it actually become gradually become the alpha and become the a alphabet that uh, leads the whole alphabetic uh, cycle and um, the animals and plant they are both you know living things right one is mobile the other is non mobile so uh, you will see that through the ancient writing I uh, you will see that the ancient actually understood it very well, much better than we give we gave them credit for. Um, I use this. Uh, I mean, I compare Chinese ancient oracle bones with the ancient um, cuneiform and also pictograph uh, in Sumerian. You will see that either the sound and the forms are very very similar to each other. So there is definitely a link since ancient time. Okay, again. 
uh, how the ancients look at the essence of life, which today we say as the soul or the self or the other way of saying it as anima, okay, or animal. That's why animal is, is come, came from, okay. So um, I will show you this very basic uh, word. This is actually representing a growing grass, a reed, okay. But you can see that already they at the bullhorn right there. And, and this means either a reed or the essence of some living creature okay and then um this all this sound c she however they used to pronounce it uh actually means life a living thing and again you know you see a more complicated you know a pile of grass like thing with the same uh horn like uh bull horn like uh, thing at the top and this is life and look at the chinese writing and then we have actually shared the same sound. If I read it in Cantonese, it is uh, T or C, okay? And in, 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 this is a Mandarin sound, this is a uh, Cantonese sound. And in the dictionary, it actually tells you it, is, uh, it was the representation of the fetus. And sometimes it goes uh, to explain it as a snake. That's why until very this, uh, until this very day, you know, the Indian world, you know, they still believe that, you know, the, for meditation and and all those yoga exercise, you are still, uh, they rep also uh, describe, you know, that self is just like a snake traveling along your spine. So with this uh, very interesting snake form and also the fetus form in ancient China uh, actually also means life, it, uh, something living. So you will see the sound right there and Chinese also have a very interesting uh, western looking symbol it's almost like an S itself and it carry the same sound as gay um, this is uh, gi or but I'm I, I'm not sure how they would they will pronounce it gi or gi and but I can tell you in Cantonese this is gay right there so gay is actually means self and Z also means oneself so uh, as the Chinese has a custom of of combining two words together to form a compound noun. So actually now these days, you know, the the word itself is only used mesoterically and used in religious and spiritual matter. But uh, we have uh, another writing, you know, bought we borrow from, which carry exactly the same sound to mean self. So nowadays when we say zi gay, it actually definitely means self. And I want you to pay attention to this S word again as you can see this is definitely an S form right there and if you are Latin speaking uh, I mean Latino speech uh, speaking and and you will definitely know that the self is uh, is always uh, okay and then uh, which gradually become the self and then the soul you know part of these uh, words for the formation of English and then the Chinese world also use uh, a piece of grass uh, to mean life and also this is a, a, a horn animal uh, actually we means uh, animal or any kind of a cattle okay so you will see that we already get to understand the flora and the fauna in the ancient world but um, what you have to pay attention is this horn right there the three prong horn and this you can also understood there's a horn right there and there is a word in between this two you know the, the the grass and the bull, we use this to mean living a life or giving birth. The sound of it is sang or sang, okay, in Cantonese. And then uh, if you go on, you will see that go back to the Sumerian world. And other than and uh, the thing, uh, if you look at this, you know, the bull, the bull horn, the bull horn, and also this little thing right there, it actually uh, carry the sound of Z. Z is actually means a piglet, which is a very uh, ancient uh, domesticated animal. And uh, in China, there is also all the remnant of the ancient worship of a pig. And that's why when the religious uh, people really develop their different monotheism and gradually the pig was being vilified as, uh, as um, almost like the devil and the snake is also vilified because the world was changing. All these ancient sacred uh, animals all, all become, you know, vilified. The snake and also the pig, okay? But, but just pay attention to the sound there, there. 
and then this is Hebrew now. Hebrew has two spelling, either Z or Z, uh, either with an Z or the S, and they both also means all these animals. Either it's a sheep, a goat, a lamb, or or means a whole herd or whole flock. So you can see that these are different people raising different animals. Obviously, you know the uh, when the writing was set, the any um, the people were raising pigs, and when the, these words were set, you know the Jewish people were raising you know sheep, goat, and lamb, and different people herding different animals. Very obviously. But the sound actually is the same, you know, ze, ze, ze. And um, if you go to Egyptian hieroglyph, you know, they have a hobble, you know, it's very obvious. If you go to Persia, they still have this kind of rope. Or you go to any Middle Eastern country, you will see actually the rope is like this. To, for them to tie the whole herd of animal to carry to the animal market and they carry the sound of sa as you can see ze sa and again um, I think you know if you have watched the program from the very beginning I had show you again and again even nowadays in America you will see that people still use the same concept you know a walking rope to carry little children you know on the street you know when the daycare children you know when they take them out on the street they still use the same walking rope okay this is you know the symbol of a tribe of animals okay uh, it carries the sound of sir if you go to Chinese you know we have this word sung as you can see you know it is a combination of the living symbol and also the bull symbol we put them together it means sung and sung is actually means all kinds of animal as well it means sheep goat cattle whatever you can think of it's just living animal and then uh, the Chinese also have, as, uh, as I said, you know, the ace kind of symbol. It carries the sound of ji. Ji is actually um, means the agent of motion. And it, in a lot of times it means a kind of movement and unseen energy. And the ji sound actually also share with, of course, you know, this ji. You see the symbol, you can uh, link it to the ancient Egyptian symbol of ang, which is the soul, the life, and which in precisely uh, in Chinese it means more directly as a, a son, a child, a person, and this is a human, okay? All these are the essence of, of living being, okay? So they all sound like ji ji, okay? And um, you can see that the Chinese has a long history, and then, and then there's also, you know, we have a lot of record about animal herding. This is a very obviously um, a writing that we record, you know, the herding of animal across the river. And there is a sound in Cantonese as sip, okay? You will see the animal herding along. And um, um, of course, you know, the animal, again, you will see this A is also from this A too. So the A is not only limited to the Phoenician, the Chinese has a lot of this A, but it just doesn't carry the sound of A, but it carry the same meaning. And then if you go to the Chinese, you know, we have two of this uh, symbol put side by side. The sound is also sung in, uh, in some ancient poem more than 3,000 years ago when we describe, you know, a whole herd of animal, a flock, abundance of deer, we actually double this sound, you know, double this sound, sound, to mean, you know, tons of this animal. And if you write it in the ancient way, you actually keep writing this horn animal to mean, you know, this whole abundance of animal. And you will see that people use words very different from how you use word now, okay? And of course, you can see, um, if you go, you know, in Mongolia, we still have a pocket of people, uh, which is, uh, hurting uh, deers and in a uh, deer in ancient time even in Sumerian and also Chinese they were both carrying the same sounds and puns together with abundance we uh, share the same animal and the same meaning in ancient time and 
I go to the uh, flora, uh, flora world and then uh, in Chinese you have this uh, uh, writing right there. It becomes uh, determinative whenever we see that, we actually uh, understand that it means something is growing. Of course, you know, when you put two together, it's just a part of grass. And when we put more and more together, we actually know that, you know, it means more and more grass. Of course, you know, when uh, we grew, uh, when the ancient know more and more about of, of their natural world they actually get to know more about different grasses they make use of different grasses and there is one very important grass that actually carry the same sound with this word in ancient time but I won't uh, confuse you with sound now but you have to pay attention to how the ancient understood grass okay and you will see that there is a very important growth symbol right there for us this is sweet you know for some time and about uh, um, in the uh, 2,500 years ago, uh, wheat become also known in China. Other than rice in the north of China, we started, you know, to eat wheat. So uh, wheat is nothing but uh, the, the domestication of this wild grass. So you will see that people started more and more to pay more attention. And all this different writing is just the result of how they learn about the environment. And um. Again, because of this, I want you to see their actual parallel. This is the flora uh, writing, and now you go to the fauna. This is the ancient writing for bull, and it becomes like this. One is like this, and this is two. When we put two together, it actually, for us, it means a partnering. And then, you know, we put more together as you can see you will understand the ancient world they actually see uh, tons of uh, animal actually running around for us this uh, actually means you know animals running and then um, as I said you know when we put four together this is also four together you see the symbol the three point on put together but because we want to distinguish them we put four of this animal together it actually means abundance of this living animal so you will see that the ancient already pay a lot of attention to distinguish different uh, uh, living being one is immobile so they put them together these are all moving animals you know one is the flora the other is the fauna but uh, one thing very common is that the sir, sir sound is always used to mean the very essence you know of that self and then the other way of expressing it is by using the a sound in the western world but uh, in both world in the east and west both actually still exist but we just have them in hidden in different places okay but okay i uh, one second uh, yeah i want to show you all this you pay attention to the, all these uh, uh horn light signs uh in the east and west you know this is uh in chinese this is back in the ancient uh, uh, cuneiform in the uh, Sumerian world and back to the Chinese world. And then this is the Chinese world, the three prong uh, horn of a plant, the three prong of an animal. So uh, I want to explain also a little bit about the Western world. And the word fauna is actually comes from the animal. Uh, the, the, a uh, male part of fauna is called faunus. It is an ancient Roman god, you know, of, of the animal. You will see that it's also horned. So you will see that the horn for the ancient is actually means abundance. It also means the growth power, the multiplication power of this living animal. So all these things the ancient looked at is very different from how you read uh, modern writing. So you, in order to understand the development of ancient language languages, you do have to go into the ancient uh, people's head. Okay, so and I also want to compare this to ancient writing. This is a Chinese writing. Gradually from this A, we become uh, this writing, the Ji sound in ancient uh, Chinese. But compare this. We both use this symbol to use, you know, something uh, either plural or I, uh, we actually in, in the uh, Hebrew world, uh, the word 
uh, three is always used as you can see you know the three prong right there and you see the similarity between we just use them differently and also within the Chinese world you will see that uh, the fauna we repeat it four times the flora we also repeat it four times so it's by repetition that we exaggerate things and next week I will talk a little bit about uh, how uh, the ancient use repetition as the uh, exaggeration duration in telling you you know to pay attention to the multiplication so uh, if you want to understand more about how the ancient used uh, doubling the, the duo and the triple and, and the quadruple writing so you tune in next week okay and also if I'm going too fast you can always uh, go to the YouTube type in the type in the program's name because I have uploaded all the uh, episodes into the YouTube okay so now I will go to the next slide I will show you how important a little grass is uh, of course you know the set is very very important if you don't pay attention to a little grass you know you will actually miss a lot you know the, about how human development for you this grass is might be a nuisance but for the ancient without this grass you know we we could have never developed uh, as, uh, our world into what we are now. Uh, this is the, the seeds of sedge. You will see that. And then you will see the pre point that the Chinese started to write to mean grass. And then it gradually become, you know, a symbol of living thing. And then uh, you will see also uh, the grass gradually grow, still always a three prong thing. And then the Chinese have this as the meaning of the sun, and, uh, which means uh, living and, 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 and life and giving birth. And this is all the symbol of, of life. And of course, this gradually becomes the sangre if you speak Spanish it is sangre something which has blood which is a living thing and then if you speak French this is also you know uh, stays there and then the sante is also the health you know if you have life you have health so all these uh, words are still uh, retained in different area in, in different languages so um, the grass as I said you know it gives us life um, uh, this is a picture you know, in the uh, early 19th century, this is a picture of China when the Westerner visited. You will see that there's a whole bowl load of grass. You know, now you pay don't pay attention to the grass, but as I was young and as I travel in all these uh, less developed countries, as I show you before, grass whatever wherever I go, wherever I go to the market, grasses and grass product are always the main product. So this was. China in the 19th century so you will see that grass can be used as feed for animals grass can be used as fuel grass can be used to weave all those basket tree the roof and the wall that you, you the screen that you bear you 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 separate spaces so uh, without grasses a lot of the human civilization would not have developed and then I will show you another world full of grass which is we all know that is the mess Mesopotamia. This is the Persian Gulf right there. You, as you can see, everything is made of grass. Your livelihood, your house, everything is made of that. And having said that, I remember when I was a child, even in Hong Kong, if you go to fishermen's villages, the houses will exactly look the same. You know, so um, as I as a, someone from Asia, I would really believe that you know there is already com there was already communication between the two ancient worlds because it's not impo it's not possible that I see all these uh, same form of houses uh, weave the same way except the geographic background is a little bit different but the fishermen's village is always looks like this the form of the houses they are very very similar to me and then. And the grass is so important because it gives life. And um, without the grass, you cannot rear animals. And I grew up with all these uh, images in, in my head, right? So uh, in these uh, 
places where there were abundance of grasses. If you are from Boston, you will know Fenway. Now Fenway, you look, you don't really go to go to it. But Fenway in ancient time would be the most luxurious place. All the life will be there. If you hunt, you have to go there. If you want to get food, you have to go there. If you want to rear your animal, you have to go there. But now it looks like an abandoned place, just like what you think the Mesopotamia is abandoned. But in the ancient world, this places uh, grew abundant with grass is actually a very very fertile place so you see the buffalo a very very early species of cattle and then this is a Chinese painting uh, of the children grew up with buffalo and I went to China as a child you know these pictures were still very fresh in my head and then this is a picture also I found in the internet in the in the Persian Gulf you know in this place where the Mandan you know a, a, a kind of Arab people who, who, who dominate the fertile you know a swampy area they still live uh, with their buffaloes around you know exactly like the pictures that you can see in in old China so I don't see much difference because you know all this life was given by the grass itself the grass feed the animal the animal gave milk milk feed the, the people so without this little piece of grass you know we cannot live you know to the, what the world is like now so uh, time is running out but I want to talk a little bit about about, you know the the ancient grass this is sars the ancient cuni cun cuneiform of the word grass and you will see if you turn it 90 degrees you will see it's very similar to to what these uh, pictures are so uh, you see the sound uh, very similar sars and sang right there and the symbol of living and the symbol of grass as I said you know I've shown you already we we pay attention to more and more we become expert in different kind of grass and we know how to distinguish the sedge and all kinds of rushes and also we learn what to uh, to make them into hay to feed the animal when the grass are no longer around in the winter as I said the H and the S is always interchanged so even grass itself it keep changing around and then uh, again you know when we uh, learn how to domesticate uh, some grass it become the wheat it become our food and this is grass in China this is grass in and, and read in the ancient Mesopotamian world you will see that we look at grass the same way this growth and represented by the same uh, bull head right there okay um, sorry time is running out I want to go slow this week because I want you to understand uh, things are very complicated because I pull so many things together but uh, from this week on I will pay more attention to compare Sumerian and Chinese to let you see more similarity between the two ancient culture and you will see that uh, we went side by side we developed side by side and there's no